virtually every piece of furniture uh, that I make has uh, many, many curves on it. And I've had to develop a, a method of cutting very, very close to those curved pencil lines. Using the side of the blade and just applying that ounce of pressure allows me to get very close to my pencil line so that I'm not spending a tremendous amount of time uh, hand planing, hand scraping down to the actual shape I want. I'm already really close right off the bandsaw. When you're using the bandsaw, setup is incredibly important. The first thing you want to make sure is that the blade is tracking on the top of the crown of the upper wheel. The second detail is blade tension. It's really not necessary to over tension the blade. For this cut, we're using a half inch blade, but I've only got the tension set for a 3 8 blade. Another important detail is actually to use a coarse blade because the coarse blades have a large gullet which pulls the sawdust through the wood in a very efficient manner. Most people think if you're gonna make a fine line, you use a fine blade. Well, that's actually detrimental. Uh, sawdust in the kerf packs up and the blade at that point wants to avoid the compacted sawdust and you'll get a wobble to your line. You avoid it by using a coarse blade. The next important detail, of course, is the guides, and they should be set very, very close to the blade. You want to support the blade during the cut. If they're too far apart, the blade's going to wobble, and you'll end up with a wobbly line. This assembly is not only the upper blade guide, but it's also the blade guard. It should not be above the surface any more than perhaps a quarter or at most half an inch. You don't want it up high enough that you can get your fingers underneath the blade guide. So let's get cutting and I'll share some tips as we go. To avoid the whole issue of choking up on the piece of wood, I'm going to recommend that you actually hold it much further back. The bandsaw blade has a wide curve. There's a tooth that goes left, a tooth that goes right. And if you attempt to sort of feed down the middle of that, that piece of wood is going to alternate back and forth and that's what gives you the wobbly cut. What we'll be doing is just ever so slightly pulling the piece of wood in against the side of the blade and that acts as our steady rest. You can see just how close to the pencil line we've, we're actually able to get. Now this surface here is going to take almost nothing to finish. The same side pressure uh, trick works when you've got to start a cut that intersects an edge. So we're again going to use the back of the blade as a steady rest and we're going to rotate it around until the teeth start to cut. And then we can apply uh, pressure again to the side of the blade to finish the cut. Let me show you how to cut a really tight corner. And to do that, we're going to have to change the blade to something much, much narrower. We're going to be stringing a 3 16 inch blade, but with four teeth per inch. So again, very large gullet that's going to effectively withdraw the sawdust out of the kerf. The blade guides have to be moved back because with a narrower blade, if we were to mount it without moving them, we'd find that the ceramic guides would damage the teeth. So we're just going to slide them back and then bring them forward after we've got the blade in place. Now we've installed a much smaller blade on here and we've had to reset the guides. So again, they're just behind the gullet of the, of the tooth, both on the upper guide and the lower guide. Now I'll cut out this tight radius this semicircle. When you're cutting tight on the bandsaw, you really want to avoid twisting the blade. On a small piece like this, I'll just lighten my hand pressure and the piece will tell me whether or not I've twisted the blade because it'll want to twist back. Now this surface here is going to take almost nothing to finish.